although DeFi is still a pretty young industry and it's still kind of small, but at the same time, it's quite large because the population doesn't fit the amount of things out there today. All right. So there isn't enough people to explore everything. And honestly, if you want to take your time and read about things on a daily basis, you'd end up reading every day for the rest of your life. And it's very difficult to pick the winners from the losers out there. But right now in a bear market, it's important to build your position and it's important to find places where you can park liquidity and earn on that. All right. So, and that's something I keep doing. I keep searching for these places and inverse finance is a good one. And that's the subject of today's video. We're going to discuss the protocol as a whole and specifically its denominated stablecoin. Now, I cannot go straight away and talk about the stablecoin itself. I need to first lay down the structure and, you know, talk about the products that Inverse Finance offers. Now, one thing I want to say before I do that is right now, Inverse Finance operates exclusively within a DAO. So it was founded by one person, but then it was delegated to a full DAO type of approach. So right now there are contracts that are operated by DAO governance votes and they are responsible for maintaining the protocol altogether. So that's something that you should know before we go ahead and kick this off, all right? So here they are, the three products slash tokens, because these products are tied to tokens that Inverse Finance offers. First, you have FIRM, then you have the stablecoin, DOLA, that's the denominated name, and then you have a new addition called DOLA backed or dollar uh, borrowing rights, basically. And it uh, has a ticker DBR, all right? So, a few words, FIRM is technically the bread and butter of the whole platform. So this is a fixed rate lending market. So it is a place where you deposit collateral, you earn on this collateral, and then you borrow against it by minting the denominated stable coin dollar, all right? so. It is the central of operations, so to speak. So we had, like I said, it allows you, there are specific collaterals. So if you go right now on the DAP, you will see them all. And it's a fixed borrowing rate because even though it's still variable, of course, depending on the supply minted, but it's fixed amongst all collateral options. All right, so that's what I mean. So it's just one, one <coughs> borrowing rate for all of them. So there's a list, like I said, you can go ahead and check. Each one of them has a specific underlying earning factor to it. And by that, I mean a specific APY that generates you additional yield just by depositing them in firm. So you can just actually go ahead and do so without borrowing dollar, but you can also take advantage of that. There is a specific borrowing rate or borrowing ratio for each of these collaterals. For example, the most common collateral and the one that has the most TVL is the native asset of the platform INV, INV, all right? So that's the governance token. So INV has most of the TVL because the underlying APR is close to 60% overall, which gives you INV, XINV, and DBR as rewards. So XINV basically is, you know, a staked version of INV and it has its own functions. But again, that's not the full purpose of the video, but to introduce DALA, the stablecoin, we need to talk about the bread and butter of the platform. So FIRM, all right? So again, that is the originator that started inverse finance. And DALA, like I said, is a decentralized stablecoin, but it's backed by debt, okay? Retractable debt, so to speak. So it's not algorithmic and it's not backed by liquid cash. And based on whatever I told you in FIRM, you get the idea, right? So it's backed by the collateral that people deposit to borrow it. We're going to get into the whole process a bit later. And like I said, DBR is the dollar borrowing rights. A few words about this because it has been, like I said, released recently. Bas owning this gives you the right to not pay any borrowing rates on the collateral that you have and on the supply you borrowed, AKA minted. So assuming 
uh, let's say you deposited an amount, you borrowed a thousand dollars, and then you buy worth of one year of DBR. All right, so there's a formula there. So basically, for each one dollar, you have to buy one DBR, but in dollar value, that's different because right now one DBR is ten cents and one dollar is one dollar. So basically, you buy ten times less. So if you're borrowing one thousand, then Basically, you purchase DBR, and if the borrowing rate exceeds the amount of DBR that you have for the amount of dollar that you borrowed, then you are a winner because you're not paying your borrowing rates, and at the same time, you basically uh, have a token that if it appreciates, you can sell it for a quick profit. So that's how it works. You always have to compare the DBR price with the borrowing rate, and if it makes sense for you, to basically buy purchase this token but keep in mind that as you come closer to the end of your uh borrowing time frame that dbr is gonna get slowly depleted so technically you're gonna let go of it at some point and it will be giving back and burn to the protocol so it's an interesting concept not gonna lie now again the full focus because that's what people care about the most is how can i earn the most on a stable coin so here's how dollar works just as a quick TLDR, right? So like I said, FIRM holds the collateral and then there's a borrowing rate, there's a borrowing ratio, then you mint dollar based on the supply that is available, that's one, and two, based on how much you can mint on your collateral. So INF allows you up to 30%, ETH for example allows you up to 80%, so there are many options you can check for yourself. So you take that dollar and then you're gonna use it somewhere else right so why else would you hold the stable coin because you want to take advantage of yield opportunities that exist elsewhere across all l2s approximately so you have velodrome aerodrome chronos phi so on and so forth we're gonna okay do a follow-up video where we're gonna discuss about these yield opportunities but keep in mind that that's how it works and the big question, peg management, how does it work? How does it stay at a dollar because it's debt backed, right? It's backed by retractable debt. And here's how it works in retrospect. So one thing though, peg management is basically operated by a subsection of the DAO and they do have specific contracts. That's how it, that's how it works because they have to control the supply, right? So if dollar goes above a dollar, then they have to retract the supply and burn it. And what this, when this happens, less supply, meaning the borrowing rates increase, meaning people will go buy a dollar from the open market at a cheaper price and pay off their loans that they took, right? So that's one, because it's one, right? So basically, you minted $1,000, but now dollar is cheaper. So you can get $1,000 for a cheaper price than 1000 bucks and you pay out that loan and then you make a quick profit and then the buy pressure push, uh, pushes dollar back to peg. Then if dollar goes above peg, then the other way around happens, meaning supply gets larger, borrowing rates decrease, and then people mint more to hold more. And then if the position need be, they can sell for a quick profit and then, you know, uh, go back in when it falls back to peg. So just to understand the concept of peg management, okay, you can go ahead and check the white paper. It's very detailed and three very important metrics that you should always look at always is the dollar supply, the FIRM TVL and the FIRM borrows because the dollar supply, as long as the dollar supply is lower than the TVL, meaning you're in good shape, all right? The borrows is how much dollar was borrowed and the supply also gets created from liquidity pools, right? So keep in mind, that's leverage. So that's very important for you to understand if you want to understand how dollar works. So in reality, when you deposit, let's say, collateral and in inv, let's say worth, I don't know, $5,000, and then you borrow $1,500 worth of dollar, okay, at the rate that it's at, the ratio that it's at, and then assuming you get liquidated with your inv when that drops to that liquidation ratio so now what you have is the protocol sells one thousand five hundred dollars worth of inv because the price dropped drastically and then you keep your dollar 
So do the math. The protocol owns the full backing of the dollar that you own. Right? So just think about that for a second if you want to completely understand how that back stable coin work. Or stable coins work because i'm sure there are others out there i know that there is one for sure i used it at some point but anyways and yeah inverse runs on ethereum but if whenever you want to take advantage of it opportunities you can go on l2s they even have their own bridge now a few technicalities just to end this video you know with a nice touch inv is listed on coinbase and that's something quite important because it gives legitimacy to the protocol coinbase doesn't li just list any token they do a lot of due diligence and they do a lot of research but well, that's i think a good confidence boost all right like i said dollar pairs are quite lucrative on other l2s we're gonna have a separate video on this borrowing fees because you are earning apy under on your underlying collateral meaning those borrowing fees that you see in the FIRM circle back to the protocol and then they can be used within the ecosystem itself, all right? So, yeah, I spoke about pack management, but I'll just remind you that go read that section in the white paper because it's very important if you want to understand how this works, all right? So, at the end, if I want to conclude this, you have three tokens, you have one purpose, you have quite an impressive yield range across L2s okay any questions on this feel free to ask me on telegram on the main chat in private doesn't matter i'll respond okay and if you're not in our public community chat DeFi ascension feel free to join we are a bunch of cool guys we discuss lots of things DeFi, real DeFi, also dgen DeFi, of course always always a controversial uh, controversial topic going on there but always within the realm of respect so cool room feel free to join us we'll be happy to have you all right and with that see you in the next one have a good one